Thanks. My name's actually spelled L-Y-N-N-E. Doesn't matter. I'm here to tell you about how improv philosophy can change your life. And as uh, we mentioned, I am a writer, content strategist, social media specialist, word nerd of the highest order. I want to say thank you to John Sweeney of the Brave New Workshop for the inspiration in the form of his book. Improv has been with us for a very long time, and it's changed everything from education to business and brought hilarity into our lives. It's got at its heart some core tenets that if you incorporate them into every area of your life, it can really change your outlook on things. The very first of which is to accept all ideas, because all ideas are a gift. Now, accepting all ideas does not mean executing all ideas. This ad, for example, was a gift of an idea that perhaps should not have been executed at some point in time. <laughs> what should we do on Saturday? We should go for a ride in our swanky Vespas. That's an idea. I have a business idea, rent-a-goat. Sounds like a stupid idea, it's not. That's how they mow freeway ditches and hills along the sides of freeways in Los Angeles, by mowing with goats. Defer judgment. Don't let your first thought be, well, that is a dumb idea. Remove your ego and don't edit yourself. That said, it probably is a really dumb idea to give a baby a razor and let him shave with it. So <laughs> PSA, don't, maybe don't do that. So you're in a meeting with your company, your company's intern has something to say during the meeting, your boss is in that meeting. Remove egos, no one person is more important than another person, and don't self-edit, you never know where the next great idea is going to come from. Could come from the intern, could come from the boss, could come from the janitor. Share focus and accept all styles. Put the success of the outcome over your need for the spotlight, says the person standing in front of you in the spotlight. Allow others to communicate in the way or ways they're most comfortable, and try to do so yourself. Figure out how you communicate best with your significant other. It may be a face-to-face -face conversation where it's a heart-to-heart -heart and you just spill everything. They may need to absorb that and get back to you later in an email that they've put a lot of thought into. You need to make it work between the two of you and figure out how you communicate best to make it a success. Declare who you are, what you do, and your point of view loudly, quickly, and clearly. You don't actually have to shout. But if you do so, that it allows you to speak, act, and live with clarity and purpose. It makes everything easier on you and everything easier on the person you're interacting with. If you agree with something, speak up. You may validate somebody who agrees with you. If you disagree with something, speak up. Otherwise, you're going to end up saying or doing something that you hate. If you don't know what you want, speak up because somebody else may be able to help you figure it out. Create a no-status environment where you and others can create freely, remain accessible, and don't let perceived roles get in the way of doing either thing, even if you are queen of the refrigerator, freezer, and apple pie. <laughs> She's lovely. You've been the lowest on the totem pole before in any, in any area of your life, and you've had great ideas there. Great ideas can come from any place. They can come from kids, they can come from senior citizens, they can come from any area of the company. You have to be open to them, you have to be looking and listening for them. Reward innovation and creative risk-taking. Get excited about creating truly innovative ideas. Other people have mentioned that here tonight. The status quo might be really comfortable, but it's also really boring. Most people don't, at the end of their lives, go, you know what, I'm so happy that I lived my routine every day, the same thing every day, went to, this, went to bed at the same time. I lived my life in a bubble-wrapped little bubble, and I feel great about it. Life should be exciting, but you have to go out and find and create the excitement. Say yes first. Say yes to an idea, and that allows you to build on it and reach its full potential, like wonder sauna hot pants. The short variety, the long variety clearly did not cut it here. <laughs> Might still be on the market. So a bird dive bombs you while you're eating a BLT. Say yes to that idea, and suddenly you've got the next angry birds on your hand and those adorable little piggies. Use your common sense, however. That nice young gentleman over there with the thumb out and the ax in his hand that looks like he needs a ride, no. Just say no. <laughs> look at change as fuel. It's an exciting extension of what's next. Don't look at it as an interruption of what's reliable and consistent. Create new skills to ignite and promote change. You don't have time in life to worry about what if. What if the moon falls into the ocean? There's a huge buffet of life in front of you. You can't waste time on this kind of stuff. If the moon falls into the ocean, spend your time responding appropriately to the current necessary changes, in which case you should bring boots because the water is probably going to be rising. <laughs> Just say no. Say no to judging. That's stupid. Say no to negating. Everything that guy says is wrong. Say no to figuring out what is wrong with things. We can't adopt that cat. It could have gout. Say yes and celebrate. 
I say yes to hearing your ideas and connecting with you all, hopefully after the show, feel free to reach out anytime and ask me more about how improv philosophy has changed my life. I really appreciate you listening, and thank you to you all. Steve Holt. <laughs>